Hello and welcome back to this Friday's episode of Sports Corner. I'm Cole Young, and this past week was chaotic in the sports world, so I'll get right to it. Starting in the world of college football, we had the conference championships this past weekend, which determined the final four teams that will enter the college football playoffs. Washington was able to hold off an Oregon comeback and defeat the Ducks 34-31 to earn the Pac-12 title, which also might be the last Pac-12 game ever. Number 8 Alabama shocked the world and upset the number 1 ranked Georgia Bulldogs. It was Georgia's first loss since falling to the Crimson Tide in the 2021 SEC Championship game. In between those defeats, the Bulldogs won 29 games in a row, two national championships, and an SEC title last year. Michigan shut out Iowa to complete their undefeated season. Florida State also kept their undefeated record intact after beating Louisville for the ACC title, and Texas blew out Oklahoma State in the Big 12 title game. The world waited with bated breath on Sunday for the committee to announce which four teams would be entering the college football playoffs on New Year's Day. The final four teams were Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Alabama. Michigan and Alabama will square off in the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day, while Washington and Texas will be competing in the Sugar Bowl. Florida State became the first undefeated Power 5 conference champion to be left out of the playoffs, which led to some understandable outrage. Florida State has been playing with their third-string quarterback the past few weeks after a tragic, possibly career-ending injury to star quarterback Jordan Travis. This, unfortunately, did play a factor in deciding to keep Florida State out of the playoffs. The Seminoles will now face the other school who felt snubbed by the playoff committee, the Georgia Bulldogs, in the Orange Bowl on December 30th. Some of the other major bowl games that I'm looking forward to are the local LA Bowl at SoFi Stadium, where UCLA will take on my alma mater, the Boise State Broncos, on December 16th. USC will be representing Southern California in the Holiday Bowl against Louisville on the 27th. This year's surprising team, University of Arizona, will look to cap off their impressive season with a win over Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl. Notre Dame and Oregon State will play in a solid matchup in the Sun Bowl. Ohio State and Missouri are set to battle in the Cotton Bowl. Ole Miss and Penn State make up the Peach Bowl. Oregon will face Liberty University in the Fiesta Bowl. And Tennessee and Iowa will head to Florida for the Orange Bowl. That's a lot of bowls to cover, but that's only about half of them. Bowl season starts on Saturday the 16th and ends with the national championship on January 8th. While college football is wrapping up, we still have five more weeks of regular season NFL football before the playoffs start. There were some surprising losses this weekend that shook up the current playoff picture. While the Eagles still remain the number one seed in the NFC, they will have to fight hard to remain in that seat after an embarrassing 42-19 loss to the two-seed 49ers. Brock Purdy threw for four touchdowns, while Debo Samuel had three and Christian McCaffrey added one. The Broncos' winning streak came to an end after a last-second interception thrown by Russell Wilson that sealed the loss to the Texans 22-17. The biggest shock was the Packers defeating the Kansas City Chiefs 27-19 on Sunday night, bringing Kansas City to an 8-4 record after their third loss in the last five games. Packers quarterback Jordan Love put on a stellar performance, throwing for 267 yards and three touchdowns en route to a victory. Here's a look at the current playoff picture. The Packers snuck their way into the NFC wildcard spot with that win, but the Rams, Seahawks, and Bucks are just on their tail. The Eagles, 49ers, Lions, and Falcons still remain the division leaders. In the AFC, the Dolphins have made themselves comfortable as the number one seed, with the Ravens, Jaguars, and Chiefs rounding out the remaining divisional leaders. The Steelers, Colts, and Browns currently hold the wildcard spots, with the Broncos, Bills, Texans, and Bengals just a game or two out. I went 3-1 with my picks last week, bringing me to 29-15 and 15 on the season, which is about 66%. Not bad, but let's see if I can secure a few more perfect weeks to bump that percentage up. In the coming weeks, I will revisit my playoff predictions from the preseason and see how close I was. Just as a sneak peek, I was very wrong. <laughs> this week, I'm going with the Ravens over the Rams, the Jaguars to beat the Browns, the Broncos to get a win over the rival Chargers, and the Packers to continue their hot streak with a win on the road over the Giants. Last week, I explained the new NBA in-season tournament. While I may not have made it crystal clear, the one thing I reported accurately was that the knockout round did indeed start this week. The Celtics and Pacers started off the bracket Monday afternoon, with the Lakers vs. Suns and Pelicans vs. Kings facing off later on Monday night. The Bucks and Knicks then finished off the first round on Tuesday night. For the East, the Pacers eliminated the Celtics behind Tyrese Halliburton's first career triple-double, and they moved on to face the Bucks in the semifinals. The Bucks breezed past the Knicks in the first round, dropping a 146-122 victory while shooting just over 60% from the three-point line. 
LeBron James had a 31-point game as the Lakers barely outlasted the Suns 106-103, and they joined the Pelicans in the semifinals. In the quarterfinals, the Pelicans upset the Sacramento Kings behind a 30-point game from former Laker Brandon Ingram. Both semifinals matchups were yesterday, and the Lakers and Pacers will face off for the inaugural in-season tournament NBA Cup. Each player on the winning roster will receive a $500,000 reward. Tip-off is tomorrow night at 5.30 p.m. on ABC. While it does seem like the World Series just ended, baseball season will be here before we know it, and the free agency rumors are already circulating. Of course, the man at the center of all these rumors is Angels two-way star Shohei Otani. Other than the Angels, the teams that are said to be all in on the Otani sweepstakes are the Los Angeles Dodgers, Chicago Cubs, Toronto Blue Jays, and San Francisco Giants. Otani is expected to be looking for a $600 million contract, which not many teams can afford. Outside of Otani, Padre star Juan Soto was officially traded to the New York Yankees on Wednesday. The Yankees also received outfielder Trent Grisham from the Padres as part of the seven-player deal. In exchange, San Diego received right-handers Michael King, Johnny Brito, and Randy Vasquez, starting pitcher prospect Drew Thorpe, and catcher Kyle Higashioka. This deal was speculated across the league for several weeks, but became official late Tuesday night. While I am biased to the NFL free agency season, this MLB free agency period is going to be historic because of the possible movements of players like Otani and the trading of Soto. Over in the golf world, this past weekend, world number one Scotty Scheffler posted a final round four under par 68 on Sunday to post a three-stroke victory at the Hero World Challenge at Albany Golf Club in Nassau, Bahamas. But Scheffler's performance might have been overshadowed by the return of Tiger Woods. Woods, competing for the first time since withdrawing from the Masters in April, finished 18th in the 20-man field on his return from injury. While it isn't the result Woods was hoping for, it's still incredible to see him back on the course playing a full 72 holes. Speaking of unsavory results, the Anaheim Ducks finally ended their losing streak that I had mentioned last week. The Ducks beat the Nashville Predators on November 14th, then proceeded to lose eight straight games. But that streak ended when Anaheim was able to pull out a 4-3 win over the Avalanche in shootouts last Saturday. But they then picked up right where they left off, losing 3-2 to Colorado on Tuesday. They will next face Winnipeg on Sunday. While the past season was rough for our SoCal teams in hockey, baseball, and basketball, one team has been representing us well. In the MLS, defending champions LAFC have gone back-to-back -back as West champions, earning a comfortable 2-0 win over Houston to punch their MLS Cup ticket. They are now one match away from becoming the first repeat winner since the 2011 LA Galaxy. LA outscored their opponents 8-3 throughout the playoffs. In LA's way of a second straight cup stands the Columbus Crew. Columbus advanced after a matchup for the ages, winning 3-2 in extra time Saturday evening at TQL Stadium over arch rival FC Cincinnati. The heavyweight matchup between LAFC and Columbus will be this Saturday at 1 p.m., live from Lower.com Field in Columbus, Ohio. That about covers it in the world of sports for this week. As always, thank you for joining me on this week's episode of Sports Corner. I'm Cole Young. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Thank you.